aware of the fact that Einstein was not happy with quantum mechanics. Um, and uh, the folklore is that the Bell uh, undermined Einstein's point of view significantly, and Bell theorem is now taken very seriously by various people, various groups, and various um, research programs. Um, however, in my opinion, Bell's theorem is a, uh, as big a scandal as uh, von Neumann's theorem was against hidden variable theory. And that's what I'm going to argue about. Uh, so, uh, um, this is the EPR setup, the standard setup of, uh, of spin going, um, spin zero particle going in two directions, and we measure that uh, spin at various uh, directions, uh, a, a prime and so on, and b prime and so on. And uh, EPR, as we were all, most of us know very well, that uh, uh, followed a logic uh, with three premises and concluded that quantum theory is actually incomplete. That means there are supplementary variables, if you like, or uh, you can have a more general conception. And that's been argued that Einstein had a much more general conception than in variable theory. Um, but the bottom, li bottom line is that uh, from three axioms, they uh, uh, derive a conclusion that uh, quantum theory is, in, uh, was incomplete, uh, is incomplete. Um, and uh, I'm in a good company uh, when I say that uh, they follow the impeccable logic because Bell also believes so, and various other uh, respected uh, scientists believe that uh, EPR argument is a valid argument. Uh, uh, so I won't have time to go read through all these um, criteria, but basically they had a sufficient criterion of reality and a, and a necessary condition for completeness of any, any possible physical theory. And the complete, uh, completeness criterion is important because my claim would be that Bell's uh, scheme of things is actually itself incomplete. Um, uh, so one has to actually go through EPR argument to, to show that the argument ne necessitates that the elements of reality that they are talking about is actually points of the two sphere, not just one point or other point, but all of these points. They exist simultaneously, and if uh, if it didn't, an EPR argument doesn't go through. So the, for any complete theory, exactly two sphere worth of elements of reality have to be taken into account. Now the question is, did Bell do that? So Bell's idea of completeness, this is a, a, from his very first paper, uh, is to co construct an expectation value um, and show that uh, the local hidden variable expectation value actually cannot reproduce uh, quantum mechanical results or a specific entangled state, a single state. Um, so what he assumes is, is uh, some complete state lambda and given the direction A and B, uh, an expectation value uh, is given by that. Uh, and uh, the variable here is the ordinary variable, not an operator. And it's, it's, it follows this map, but x0 is a zero sphere. Uh, clearly, it's not a two sphere. So um, my claim is that this is incorrect. It has to be two sphere. Um, and that follows from EPR argument itself. So Bell actually did not respect the uh, original EPR argument correctly. Uh, uh, furthermore, if you do not take two sphere, in that map, if you don't have this map, instead you have a zero sphere or any other any other subset of uh, a real line, then you have an incorrect topology. Uh, you actually are not taking account of all the elements of reality, because as I mentioned before, what one needs to do is to take into account every single point of two sphere. Uh, for it in any complete theory, otherwise you don't have a complete theory, and the uh, Bell's argument doesn't take off. I should mention that uh, the, the goal of Bell was to show that the premises of EPR, the first, second, and third premises, are actually inconsistent. But in order to show that, he must start with a complete prescription, and Bell's prescription is not complete. Um, so, what is the consequence? So uh, this is a, it's supposed to be a pun, uh, the, point, the most pointless discovery of science because it's been called the most profound discovery, discovery of science. 
And I'm pointless, I mean uh, that when at least missed one point from the two sphere. Um, so that's like it's a pointless discovery of science. Uh, so if the, the, the map, this map has here uh, some subset of R or R0, this actually follows through because R corresponds to R and R square both correspond to community algebra, and uh, this CHSS inequality immediately gives you gives the bound of two. However, if you take the, the bound which which is the correct uh, correct sorry the map which is the correct map and take S two and inc incorporate every single element of reality, then it is a very simple calculation to show that the bound actually is two root two. Uh, just to mention Paul Davis's question in the other talk about where the, does the bound come from, in my way of doing things, bound cannot be but 2 root 2 because it's a purely topological impact. And I'll show you that how that is done. Um, okay, so now I'm skipping about 35 pages of calculations. Uh, but the end result is that. With the bound, uh, oh, I, I should too much. Fine. Uh, I should mention that this map, this uh, this range of this map S two is only for the entangled state. In more general state, uh, any arbitrary quantum state, uh, the the range is actually an arbitrary topological space of elements of reality, and uh, one has to be uh, rather careful to choose that topological space to do the calculations. And, but when you do that, you can reproduce quantum mechanics, uh, locally and realistically. Uh, I have expli expli explicit calculations for original Bell calculations, CHSH. Uh, all 16 predictions of Hardy states, and all of these are exact results, no approximation of any kind. Uh, I have exact uh, results for C THZ state, three particle and four particle. And for arbitrary quantum state, of course, I don't have explicit solution, but uh, I have a formal way to show that this is always possible. 